morning ladies and gentlemen and I am leaving Stockholm it is about 10 40 in the morning here's my route as far as uh, getting to the outskirts of the city uh, essentially essentially what I'm doing is uh, we are here you see that Kista but pronounced Shista so I'm taking a bus all the way to this particular stop and then from here I'm taking a commuter train to Balsta that's basically the last you see the sea area so it, it costs about a hundred uh, kronos which is uh, you know roughly about 15 bucks or something like that and guess what Ruth's friend uh, Lars is it Lars hold on yeah R Ruth's friend Lars he basically, uh, what he did is, uh, you know, she contacted him because I could never, never get couch surfing in Oslo, in Norway. And she contacted her friend Lars and uh, she asked if, you know, he could host. He says he's away. And then he said, Pat, uh, Patrick, you know, a guy who is a flatmate, basically, of Lars, he could host. So I emailed him. He said, okay, no problem. But then next day, uh, he says, "Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna. I thought you were coming tonight or something like that." And then, and today's Thursday, the 18th of July. And so, but there's another guy, a, a friend of Lars, and he's basically uh, uh, he's a filmmaker. His name is Alistair, Alistair, and he's from Netherlands. Oh no, what am I saying? Uh, New Zealand. And he's a filmmaker, and you know, we had to call him, and like, really, that's the last resort, basically. And he said, okay, I'll, I can host you for four days. So I got to really, really, really spend my, you know, good time as far as, you know, being hosted in Oslo because it's outrageously expensive. It's like everything is almost twice as much as anywhere else. I think Oslo and, and London are like the two most expensive cities in the world. I think Oslo even like, you know, more expensive. It's about 500 kilometers, uh, some six hours if going nonstop one way. And I'm hoping someone picks me up in one shot. I have the cardboard and I picked up some uh, paint, uh, acrylic paint, so I can make like one side Oslo and the other one is like halfway to Oslo in case if uh, no one's going directly to Oslo. So I didn't have the time to make the sign and I figured uh, it's about half an hour train ride to the destination when I could uh, start hitchhiking. So I'm making <laughs> The sign right on the train. Uh, it's not really a lot of people there, so I figured why not. Hopefully, it dries quickly. It's acrylic paint, so in a way, it's water resistant in case if it starts raining, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be uh, a rainy day today. And that's basically the sign guys are going to Karlstad which is almost uh, all the way to Oslo and they're gonna fill up the, the gas tank at the shell and GPS signal lost all right so guys uh, so these guys uh, picked me up they are from Sweden everyone yeah. right yeah. so yeah. most of them come from uh, uh, an area nearby which is called Bal Balsta most of Stockholm yeah. All right, and where are you guys going? Kralstad. <laughs> and that's that's where uh, there's a band playing, right? What's, yeah, what's yeah. the name of the band? Yelena Tida. Aha, okay. It's a rock band or what kind of band? Uh, it's like some Swedish kind of pop. Classic. Swiss classic. Classic band. Yeah. I see, okay. So this is Andreas, this is Carl, this is Ignacio, and this is? Matthias. Matthias, Matthias. Matthias. Nice to meet you. I didn't nice have a chance to uh, meet you yet. So here we are, off we go to Karlstad. <laughs> so Karlstad, I, I'm not sure how many kilometers Karlstad away from uh, Oslo, but uh, the idea is um, they're gonna drop me off in Karlstad and basically <laughs> from there, uh, I'm gonna take another you know, hitch to Oslo, hopefully. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, <laughs> things are like falling. <laughs> okay, so there's like, there's a bathroom and stuff and like you can sleep up there too. 
This is a nice way of traveling. And look, it's got extra wheels in case if you get a flat tire, you can just, you know, take this one out and then, you know, replace the wheels, you know, something like that. Anyway, so it's got everything, ventilation, you name it, like compartments and stuff. Electricity. Electricity too. Can you imagine? This is like, we're living in the 24th century. It's just amazing, you know? So I was, I was hitchhiking basically right here on this spot where it says 50 and, you know, what time is it now? It's like uh, 12.45. Okay, so it's 12.45. I started the hitchhiking at 12, literally like got to that spot at 12. About 10 minutes later, there was a woman who said, uh, I'm going to El S S S something like uh, and coping, and coping, so which is like a couple of kilometers away. And uh, I figured, you know, let me wait to see what happens. And you never know, sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a wise choice to just leave the spot where you are, where, you know, where there's nothing happening. You're standing there for two hours, three hours, nothing happening. It's better to just go a little uh, distance and then move on to the bigger ride. So here I am. And how many kilometers? How many? How many kilometers uh, do you think uh, until Karlstad? Thirty. Uh, more. From Karlstad to. Uh, no, from here to Karlstad. Oh, yeah, thirty. Thirty miles. Thirty three miles. Yeah. 30 kilometers? No, more. 300. 300. 300 kilometers, okay. So we're making, out of 500 kilometers, we're making most of the half of the way. Okay, so it's like 300, so 200 more kilometers to go out. We've been driving for one hour and uh, apparently the uh, the camper cannot go faster than 80 kilometers an hour which is somewhat about uh, let's see I don't know 50 miles per hour or something like that and uh, we're stopping for some food at this place and uh, yeah I, I have a feeling it's gonna be a GPS signal lost because uh, essentially the, the guys have to stop every like hour or half an hour because the car gets overheated it's a very old uh, camper maybe about uh, since the 1960s or so. So just about uh, 10 minutes ago or so, uh, one guy, they have a, like a dealer uh, who smuggles uh, like alcohol from uh, Germany and brings it to Sweden and sells it to, like, to the kids. The guys are like 18, 19 years old and they're going to the concert and they're bringing all the alcohol with them. So they have like two bottles of vodka as well as a uh, you know, bunch of bunch of beer. Anyways, we're gonna break for lunch and... So, four and a half hours later, I am still in Sweden. And this is the guys, they just dropped me off. Uh, and I am in a place called Karlstad. Karlstad is about uh, 220 kilometers away from... Uh, what's it called? From Oslo. I'm a bit uh, tired, I don't know why, but... Uh, you know, we had lunch and everything, it was good. And the guys have fun, you know, they're going to the concert, as I told you. And uh, so, yeah, I sent the text message to Ali Star, the guy who's hosting me, the filmmaker. And I said, like, hey, you know, <laughs> I was aiming for, like, 6 p.m., but it's almost, uh, you know, 6 now. It's 5.18 or so p.m. And, yeah, that's basically it, you know. I hope uh, someone picks me up quickly and uh, we... Uh, it that 220 kilometers like there is no tomorrow so it's been exactly one hour since the guys dropped me off at the uh, shell gas station over there so i was hitchhiking at the ramp and even though the the ramp is wide enough for two cars basically kind of like you know two cars could fit you know entering the highway uh no one stopped i don't know so one hour passed i figure i'm gonna go back to either shell or there's another gas station called uh, Stat Oil, and uh, you know, just solicit for rights there. So basically, it's uh, another half an hour past since the last uh, long time I talked to you guys, and it seems like there is no spot. Like I've, I've been going between Shell and Stat Oil over there, the gas stations, and nothing seems to be working. You know, people are like okay. just local here, and there's no lanes where people can pull over, you know, to pick me up. So I'm kind of stuck in this situation and uh, this wonderful guy, David, uh, he's helping me out. Uh, he uh, 
uh, we're trying to catch uh, Wi-Fi at this McDonald's, but there's no signal. Uh, there's no Wi-Fi apparently, and uh, he's calling his brother to check if there is any uh, way uh, to see, you know, how much the pricing is for uh, catching a train, you know, like a, a rail all the way to Stockholm. And he says it's it should be cheap because it's not too far; it's like 200 kilometers. So uh, David hasn't been to America or New York for that matter, and he's very excited to meet the person from New York, and so he's helping me out. There. I'm really glad. You know, it's amazing. The world is not without kind people. So. Sometimes Swedish words really surprise me. <laughs> Take a look at this thing. I'm pretty sure it's not uh, what it means in American. So apparently uh, this is the center of uh, Karlstad. Karlstad is the area. And basically I'm going to the train station. David couldn't help. His, uh, just ask someone as far as where the train station is and here I am kind of like rolling the streets of Karlsdad never knew I would be <laughs> biking here this is a post office trucks you can see anyway so um, yeah I'm, I'm hoping uh, it's not gonna be outrageously expensive I mean it takes the a little bit of adventure away by uh, taking the train right now but uh, you know, I don't want to arrive at midnight or one o'clock. I'm already grateful for Alistar to give me a couch to stay on. It's pretty windy here. Guess what, guys? So, the earliest available time is Friday, which is next day at 5.30 in the morning. So basically, I would have to like stick around and, uh, and also it, it's outrageously expensive. 448 uh, Scandinavian Kronos. So, that's exactly as much as if you were to be coming from Stockholm. So, chances are I have no way out. <laughs> I'm stuck here. It's almost 7 o'clock p.m. And, uh, I mean, no, it's 7.44 or something like that, and uh, I'm stuck. So I'm gonna go back and just hitchhike my ass off until morning time. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I have to hit the bullet and just purchase one of these tickets and uh, just go there by my train. I would have to like maybe ask someone to call Alistair, Alistair to uh, basically uh, tell him that, you know, this is some stock. So, all right, maybe I'll find some other entrance to the highway that has a way for the cars to kind of like basically pull over. And I'll see you guys later. This is getting ridiculous, but that's part of the adventure. See you later. It's 15 past 8 o'clock and I got to the next gas station towards Os Oslo but uh, there is also no way to, for the cars to pull over. So what's the solution? I talked to one of the guys and he showed me on the map maybe there's like a, a rest stop six kilometers away. So I'm gonna have to cycle along this uh, basically bike lane and uh, just cycle there and then I will be able to kind of like, you know, solicit for, uh, for rides uh, at the rest stop because there's a lot of trucks taking a rest and everything like that. So I'm hoping <laughs> this is 8 o'clock, it's getting ridiculous. So, like I said, uh, this is uh, basically starting the trip uh, at noon or so and dragging over all the way to 8 o'clock and still uh, some 220 kilometers away and still without a ride. All right, but I'm hopeful, okay? Hope dies last, as they say in Russian. It's 8.40 and it seems like I have to walk through the forest now in order to, to get closer to the highway. So take a look at this vista. So it's somewhere in the, in the middle of nowhere and uh, the highway is basically that direction according to the GPS this is completely dirt road and because of the hills I have to get off the bike in order to climb this challenge where am I? look at all these trees wow and the road is completely 
It's like I'm in the forest and it's like a little hazy. Whew. It's like close to nine o'clock now and somewhere around ahead I am capable of entering the, the highway because it's gonna be already kind of like a local road. You know, it looks someone marked this tree. I don't know why, but these tree roots are really painful to go over with the bike. So I'm kind of balancing here. I hope there's no bears or anything like that. But that's basically what the vista is here. If you guys can see, there's the highway right on the right. And at some point, there's got to be a rest stop, according to the GPS. On the highway towards the rest stop. So it turns out there's no rest stop. And uh, the rest stop uh, I saw was like completely not populated. You know, there was only one car just for a second. So it looks like... Um, I have to cycle another maybe 10-15 kilometers until there's like a circle and I don't know this sign doesn't say how far to Oslo maybe I'll just cycle all the way to Oslo bitches anyway so yeah perhaps next sign will say uh, how far it is to Oslo but uh, that's basically it you know I'm kind of like on the road all my all by myself I don't wanna be and uh, as you could see I mean maybe I can hitchhike here but uh, the cars are going pretty fast so I don't know maybe there's kind of a if there was some kind of a construction or obstacle or something like that where cars have to slow down because essentially main thing for hitchhiking is finding a side road like this what I'm using right now but oh, all of a sudden it's becoming like a two-lane thing so anyway and yeah it doesn't say how far to Oslo so it's mainly where cars could pull over and also where they slow down if they don't slow down they will not see you they will not notice you that's basically the tricks of uh, hitchhiking Oslo 212 kilometers to go it is 927 and the Sun is setting and I'm here hitchhiking on the highway down the spot but look, how fast. look how fast the cars are passing so there's like a little uh, shoulder where cars can pull over but uh, so I don't know I don't know guys there's a, a very narrow kind of like a, you can't really bike here this particular spot is very narrow and this is kind of like a, you know the zebra not zebra it's like the pavement is really crooked for those who fall asleep behind the wheel and I'm in the middle of nowhere, stuck. So I'm heading out to the next uh, kind of circle, like I previously said. Uh, hoping the car will stop. I mean, I don't know. There's like a few cars coming over. We'll see. Holy moly, guacamole. Look at this. There is no space for the bike. GPS signal lost. And the GPS signal is lost. Look how high we are and I have to walk anyway this is uh, this is getting a little bit insane but uh, still I'm keeping the courage alive and walking the kind drivers basically pull over into that lane in order to bypass me because I'm just walking almost literally on the on the side of the road as you can see so it's a highway. I got onto the highway. It's 10 minutes past 10 and I am at this gas station. Seems to be like a 
you know, a nice gas station in the middle of nowhere. It's like an oasis in a way. There's like a Burger King behind this thing, diner over here. So looks like a nice spot to, to kind of uh, start uh, soliciting for. Look at the sky, huh? It's a good thing that uh, the nights are not too dark during this time of the year in Sweden or in uh, any Scandinavian country for that matter. GPS signal lost. And uh, so that's basically it. The idea is maybe to kind of ask someone to, uh, to either call Alistair, uh, Alistair or uh, send him a text or something. I'm really exhausted as you can see. I cycled uh, some, I don't know, 15 kilometers or so. And uh, you would think like, oh, you know, 15 kilometers cycling is not that much, but I got a load of my uh, backpack as well as this and a very narrow lane to, <laughs> to go through. Anyway, so wish me luck, guys. I hope I can catch a ride and uh, arrive perhaps by midnight or something. We'll see. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Alright, so it's uh, 25 minutes past 11 and there's still no ride and I'm trying to catch a ride. Uh, <laughs> it's already dark and I don't know if people can see the sign. But anyway, so yeah, there's one thing. I, I, I can spend the night here, no problem, you know, if mosquitoes would not eat me alive as long as I stay out of the light, you know. Um, one thing I'm kind of a little bit saddened about is the fact that, you know, Alistair is waiting for me in uh, Oslo and I don't have any connectivity as far as, you know, Wi-Fi or anything to send him a message saying, hey, you know, I'm kind of like spending the night. So I hope he's... 7.30, I've been out for like an hour and spend the night uh, out there. It's basically kind of like, a, they have a bunch of like uh, public bathrooms, but they're clean. They're like perfectly clean and you can lock yourself from the inside so I basically went into one of the uh, public bathrooms that have uh, uh, like handicap access so it's really large and you know it's completely clean floor and everything I don't know how to clean, you know how they keep them so clean so I basically you know slept for like four or five hours or something went to sleep at uh, one o'clock uh, woke up like an hour later or something. Um, anyway. so here I am still here trying to catch a ride and uh, so far seems to be didn't have breakfast yet so this area is called Grumps Grumps so <laughs> no wonder it's called Grumps right so and it's about 200 kilometers away uh, turns out I cycled from Karlstad uh, where I got dropped off by those guys the four guys in the camper uh, turns out it's only it's all it's a whopping 20 kilometers away from Karlstad to here and that's basically how much I cycled uh, all the way here when I got here yesterday night so anyway I'm hopeful and I'm asking like any any new car that comes in you know it seems like early morning it's kind of chilly already uh, by morning time but you know thanks to that bathroom I was able to spend the night uh, without having to you know sleep on the chilly out, outdoor uh, kind of like bench or something like that. All right, so it's almost 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, I just got a ticket. I got a ticket, a bus ticket to Oslo and it costs about 239 kronas, which is basically, uh, basically it's about $35 and uh, it has the cancellation uh, protection basically, but you have to do it like one hour before. And uh, so I'm leaving at 12.20 and I'm arriving three hours later to Oslo. I just sent uh, an email. Uh, there is a really wonderful uh, guy working there, Frederick. He basically let uh, me use his computer, I mean the, the computer at the uh, cash register over there. And because there was no Wi-Fi, I was like, basically kind of like completely disconnected from the world. And uh, I was able to purchase the ticket. It's a sweat sweat bus, like s Swedish bus or something like that. And apparently it has Wi-Fi on board, so I could at least, you know, not waste three hours just for the sake of sitting on the bus. I'll uh, be able to kind of browse the internet. Hopefully it's fast. Anyways, um, still trying, you know. The reason why I got with protection 
the cancellation protection is because uh, it's uh, 20 kronos more expensive actually no it's 209 without the cancellation protection and 239 with uh, cancellation protection but uh, if I cancel be one hour before like I said you know I would be able to kind of get my refund and everything and uh, but if I were to purchase the 209 that's basically it you know so if if I catch a ride you know at least an hour before I could call then I'll just ask the driver to call and cancel the, the ticket and that's basically it I mean that's the, the only way out I don't I didn't want to go back to Karlstad because there is a train station and everything and it's a 400 something almost 500 uh, kronos which is uh, close to 80, 90 dollars actually, 90 dollars and I'm a cheap bastard as you can see. Traveling, I figured, you know, already cycled 20 kilometers, why not just to Oslo? <laughs> Bus ride. Anyway, I'll see you guys later, I'm, you know, my mood is much better now, <laughs> now that, uh, you know, there's a, a bus uh, saving my assets. Alright, so if I catch a ride, I'll introduce you to the driver. Cheers was my hotel or motel if you will uh, for this night and uh, I stayed there for like you know the night starting from 1 o'clock a.m. and as you could see this this door is for the handicap access and that's basically is the gas station over there so if you press this button right here the door opens like this and look it's it's very clean like I I literally cleaned out this particular space and I slept on my jacket kind of like you know the the warm sweater kind of thing as a pillow and that was it you know it's it's very clean bathroom I mean what else do you need there's lights everything the only thing you don't get is uh, is the power outlet aside from that in the morning you wake up you can do your you know brush your teeth wash your hands, whatever, whatever, and of course there was a lock. So, at 6.30 or something, 6.25, someone just was knocking on the door, and I figured, you know, I hope it's not police or anything. So by the time I got ready, I got, I got out, uh, I came out and there was no one out there. So, but apparently, I don't know what this means in Swedish, so they're like 7.15 in the morning, you see that? KA or, I don't know, sign. So they probably come and check or whatever. So someone was probably knocking, you know, a worker. So that was it, you know. I hope, uh, I hope everywhere in the world there would be stations like this. I think it's it's for truckers, you know, truckers who come here. There's no shower or anything. It would be even better. But uh, that's basically the only thing uh, that saved my assets from mosquitoes and uh, a cooler weather. Uh, starting from 3 o'clock in the morning, I think I take it because by the time I was out at 6.25, it was pretty chilly. It was about maybe 50 degrees Fahrenheit or, uh, uh, let's see, I don't know, 13, 15 Celsius. So, okay, so I got my ticket and I'm heading out to Oslo. All right, I just sent uh, an email to Alistair, who's hosting me, and I hope he got it and he's not mad that I'm running too late and everything. So I'll see you guys later. You see that van, the orange van over there? So they were offering me, they're from Austria, and they were offering me to actually take me to uh, uh, Oslo. <laughs> now, where have they been? It's insane. So I'm like, you know, it's, it's, it's like the Murphy's Law in a way. And I couldn't, I couldn't take up on, the, on their offer. He came back, actually. I talked to them previously, some 10 minutes ago, and that was like 11... Uh, 10 or something at by 11:20 I have to cancel the uh, the ticket the bus ticket uh, to Oslo so they were debating 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 they flipped the coin by the time the coin arrived it's already past 11:20 and I cannot cancel the ticket so that's it I have to take the bus now Here comes my bus and I'm about to board for the next three hours imagine the Wi-Fi on the bus is 6 megabits connection down and 2 megabits upload speed. This is pretty 
fast speed if you ask me I mean I don't know how they get it like LTE or whichever way but it's pretty I just entered the subway and believe it or not it's cheaper to buy a weekly pass for the metro and buses than in Stockholm it was only $36 US to buy the weekly pass and it was about $45 uh, dollars US or more actually in Stockholm so this is my train the trains are much wider in thickness than the ones in Stockholm as you could see and look at the seats there's like you can play basketballs here so everything since there's a lot of oil in this country it seems that uh, the infrastructure is really well designed and uh, set up. The signs are in English as well. So there is no AC and the ventilation system is not that well implemented in these uh, subway cars because you could actually feel... What's that? I'm out. Out! Yeah. Alright guys, check this out. This is Al, Alistair. And believe it or not, I was sitting, you know, commenting about the subway system, you know, how things are and everything. All of a sudden I see uh, this gentleman walking in. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, Renat? And I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> Did I meet anyone in Norway yet? <laughs> how do, how do but, people know my name? How this is, is that possible? Yeah, how is that possible? And uh, yeah. <laughs> turns out this is Al who's hosting me, and he's coming from uh, by like by ferry from another island, and he was taking a swim, right? Yeah, yeah. So what's the island's name? Uh, Lang Langoyene. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. That's one of the better islands. You're just like. you're just like my uh, my host in uh, Stockholm, Ruth. Yeah. She religiously takes, like, you know, every summer she just goes to swim every, like, every day. You gotta immerse, man. You gotta, yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. Immerse. So, yeah, so uh, how, how are things? Thank you so much, by the way, to, you know, for hosting me and, like, you know, <laughs> it's kind of... So, Al is a filmmaker as well. What kind of films do you do? Just briefly. Just, just briefly, uh, music videos, mostly. That's music all videos. And I'm going to be filming some music videos as well uh, for the City Dance project. Uh, here and I'm hoping people are open-minded uh, just like in Stockholm and everything and we can you know film it like there is no tomorrow so yeah. all right I just got a, a card uh, one of those uh, seven day unlimited cards and it's much cheaper than one way ride one way ride is like five dollars but it's 36 for one week so go figure it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven they, their their system is like calculating seven rides or something per week or something. <laughs> I don't know yeah. anyway so until next time I'll see you guys later cheers